Hi, and welcome to Lab Rats. I'm Andy Walker. And I'm Sean Carruthers. And today on the show, uh, you're going to show us how to uh, add a second hard drive. This is something that we've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, but we, I think we did have something about adding our second hard drive. We didn't actually walk through that process, right? No, we're going to do that this time around, show you what you need to do both from a physical perspective and a software perspective. So where do we get started, Sean? Well, with the hard drive. So if you want to uh, get yourself uh, more space on your computer, you'll want to add a second hard drive. Now, a lot of people get really intimidated just thinking about that, but it's not really an intimidating process when it comes right down to it. Yeah, I mean, I think what the, most people will never open the, ca their, the case on their machine unless perhaps they're going to add RAM, which of course is the best way to upgrade a machine. Mm -hmm. So I suppose this is probably the second easiest thing to do, but it takes a little bit of know-how. Would you agree? Uh, it takes a little bit of know-how, but not as much as you think. Now, it takes a little bit more know-how if you're going to take your old hard drive and completely replace it with a new one. We're just going to talk about adding a second one, because that's mostly what you need to do with uh, the, the needs you have for hard drive space these days. You need a, to add uh, space for your MP3 collection, you need a second hard drive, not necessarily a bigger main hard drive. Right. So, so, so watch carefully because this is we're going to take this through this very simply, and it's actually a fairly easy process. Just pay attention. Okay, let's do okay. it. Okay, first thing I wanted to talk about with yes. this is the logical block addressing. Now that sounds like a big acronym, no. LBA, right off the top. Uh -huh. um, what this comes down to essentially is the gigabyte barrier. It's 137 gigabytes will be the spot where older systems will cack out. So if you've got an older system, like you might... Windows 95, 98, ME... Yeah, even XP from right. the first few editions of that, right. uh, it will stop at 137 gigabytes because oh. the hardware on your computer before that point was 28-bit LBA, which could support 137 gigabytes. Okay, um, so wait a second. So, I mean, practical world example, you buy a, go buy a 160 gig hard drive, and you stick it in your machine, and up for some reason, it only reports 137. Right. So what's so LBA? So what is so what is what's the mechanics going on there? Well, it's just the uh, the uh, number of bits going through the controller on your hard drive. Right. It just doesn't have the capacity to manage that flow of data. Is that right? Right. And uh, because of that, a lot of old well, all the old versions of Windows XP also stopped at 28 bit. Right. Now, th this is something you only have to worry about if you have an IDE based drive. Oh, right. Ones that have serial ATA, which we'll show you in a minute, don't have that issue. They're 48-bit right out of the uh, right out of the. So shoot. we're talking about machines that are like two years old, two years right. or older. Is that right. right? And in in a lot of cases, if you have a RAID controller on your motherboard, you're already good to go with 48-bit. So you don't really have to worry about it. It's it's worth checking just to be safe. Okay. But uh, in general, if you have 48-bit on your motherboard, you still want to make sure that you're upgraded to Service Pack 2 on Windows right. XP at the very least. Now, if you have, I mean, if you're one of these people that uh, uploads Windows up, uh, update, uh, not uploads, but sorry, hits Windows update or just downloads all the latest fixes, you will have SP2. It was released in, uh, I think it was the fall of 2004. So unless you haven't done any updates in a long time, you're probably going to have SP2 on your system right now. Yeah, in some cases, there may be a registry hack required to activate this. We'll, we'll try to put that in the show notes as well. Okay. Said so if you've got serial ATA on your system, you don't have to worry about this. Good. You're already ready to go. Now, serial ATA is a brand new type of hard drive technology, and how is it different from IDE? Uh, well, it's got different cables, different power connectors, and different throughput. Now, the older hard drives uh, had, I think, 133 uh, megabytes per second. I'm okay. pulling that uh, off the top of my head after uh, not... Uh, I think your phone's going off. I think my phone's going off. It must be my mom. Mm. So um, these ones start at 150 megabytes per second th throughput. So it's, it's much faster than the older drives uh, already. And uh, in the future, they're looking at maybe 600 megabytes per second. So we're looking at a really fast uh, transfer rate on these drives. OK, good. And okay, so let's, let's haul up one of these things. So I want to have a look yeah. at the, the serial ATA in action. Yeah, and this uh, gives that was a chance to look at the cables, too. Oh, good. Uh, oh, oh. And serial ATA is heavier than the old school. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da. Dad was actually kind enough to send me this. This is a Dell Dimension 9150, brand new uh, dual core multi processor machine with PCI Express. And I love it because I'm using it to test Windows Vista. So I'm writing a new book called Windows Vista Help Desk. will be out in January 2007. All right, on with the show. So what are we looking at here, Sean? We're looking at the inside of a computer right here. And uh, you'll notice down in the bottom corner over here, we've got the hard drive uh, that you've already got in your system. Yes. And uh, there's space in beside there for another one. Now, it, this is a, a proprietary case from, uh, from Dell. So it's a little bit different than the ones you'll see in a lot of cases. You're uh, probably going to see somewhere on the front here a number of spots for um, 
Is that the front? Yeah, it is. You're probably going to see a bunch of spots over here to slide your hard drive in. In where? Oh, in a conventional case? In a conventional case, okay. right. right. And in this case, uh, what you have is you have this little uh, rail system. And you'll pop that onto the, the hard drive itself. I don't, shape, I don't even want to know. This is weight. And then this will slide in like so. This is hard to do backwards. So what can I to say? You know, there's, there's some tips that just some people just can't, can't see. Force mm. the trees. This, this one, no, it probably is in this way. That's why. Okay, so that'll slide in here, and then you will have other cables that will uh, connect here. You've got power on the one side, and you've got uh, the serial ATA connector on this side. Right. And you'll just follow the other ones that you've got here to uh, where they connect to the motherboard and find the second connector like that. Okay. Good. Okay, so basically, uh, so the installation, physical installation of a second drive is very, very straightforward. It's usually pretty straightforward. Now, do you have to match uh, the size of the hard drive? Only if you do RAID. If you're just uh, adding a second hard drive, they can be two completely different sizes. And brands as well. They can be two completely different brands, and they can even be uh, two completely different interfaces. You can have serial ATA and IDE on the same system. Uh, if, if, motherboard support, if your motherboard, if your motherboard supports, supports it. it. Okay, so the physical uh, manifestation of this is pretty straightforward, as you can see, but there is some software implications, right? There you is. You don't just turn the machine on, all of a sudden it works, right? Typically not. Unless the uh, hard drive has been used before in some capacity, then uh, it'll fire up and may actually see it, but most of the time when you're getting an unformatted hard drive out of the package, there is something that you have to do first. All right, well, let's uh, get this thing off and uh, do you some help there, girly man. Oh, look at the big muscles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we have to do, uh, let's have a look at Windows XP here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I'm actually going to bring up an external hard drive because for all intents and purposes, this will function the same way. All right, so we will plug this in. Are we recording now, sir? Yes, we are. Okay. So, the so first again, what, thing so you want to talk me through this. The first thing you'll notice. Myself. Yeah, the first thing you'll notice is if you go into your my computer. Now you would think that this would show up as a, um, a hard drive in here. Yeah. Um, just like your C drive does, but uh, you will soon see that it does not. Okay, so what you have right there, right now, is your IBM preload, which is yeah. this. That's my main drive. That's, that's my main drive. drive. That came with the system. Right, and uh, the D drive is your CD drive. That's right. And it looks like you've been watching a bit of news radio. Yeah, I just bought the, there's a third and fourth season of news radio, I think, or second and third season. Very nice, highly recommended. All right, so what you want to do when you want to format a drive, typically you'd go to that and right click on it and click format. Right, so but should we do that? Yeah, but it's not there. That's the oh, problem. Oh, that's right, yeah, where is it? It should be show up as a, my E drive, mm -hmm. no? It would if it was formatted, yes. C, D is the optical, E, right? That yeah. would theoretically, okay. So what you need to do here is you actually need to go into your control panel. This is assuming Windows XP. This is hard work. All right, control panel oh, it is. There's a good reward at the end of this. Okay. So when you're setting this up for the very first time, you'll want to go into uh, the computer administration here. Right. So administrative to tools. Administrative tools over here, double click mm -hmm. on that. And then you're going to double click on computer management. Right. This is pretty much the only kind of place you really go in, uh, in this kind of administrative tools thing, right? I mean, this is sort of the, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think I've ever met much around here too much. Mm -hmm. Performance, perhaps. Anyway. I right, think your mom left a message. I know she did. She's uh, like, Andy, dinner's ready. Come on over. Mom, I'm shooting lab rats. <laughs> okay, so. She'll, she'll wash my socks. All right, so now that you're in here, you'll notice a whole pile of stuff on the left-hand panel, system tools and yeah. storage, and storage is obviously where we want to go. Okay. So you want to go to disk management. Disk management, okay. And uh, as soon as this pops up, you will see the drives that you already have on your system. So you've got IBM preload and IBM service, which is, I guess, is a ghost partition for you to bring yeah, stuff back from. Yeah, so that's sort of going to restore partition that IBM put on the machine. Oh, actually, Lenovo put on this machine. Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom, you've got news radio again. That's your CD drive. But between those two, you see disk one, and that's what we're looking at here. All right, and showing um, an unallocated. Right. What does that mean? That means it hasn't been set up yet. So okay. you, what you need to do is you need to How do two things. How come it just doesn't it hasn't been set up yet? Um, <laughs> Yeah, tech speak. I know. I know. Okay. People make good money writing Star Trek scripts with this kind of gobbledygook. That's right. Unallocated. Right. Okay. So the first thing you want to do with this is right-click that unallocated partition. To allocate it? And put new partition. You should say allocate, don't you think? <laughs> make it so. Okay. All right, so now it's going to create a new partition on here. You're right. going to get the wizard, so you're going to click next. Next, okay. 
and select the partition. Uh, you will want a primary partition on Why, this. So what's the difference between primary and, and, and extended here? Well, what you can do is you can actually set up um, that drive and so split it up into two different partitions. Mm -hmm. So we, in this case, we're just going to do a primary partition. If right. you had split that up into two separate ones, you yeah. do one as a primary and one, one as an extended. extended. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's just do this as a nice. primary. Sure. And uh, maximum disk space in megabytes. This is where we can actually choose the size of our partition. Okay. So if you wanted to make it, say, 120, you would you know, bring that down accordingly, 120 right. gigabytes. Okay. So let's just make it uh, the full size. Okay, so, it's, so, it's a, so look, it's sitting at about a, it's a 200 gig drive, I guess. Mm -hmm. I guess. Next. And assign the following drive letter. That's cool. That's good. So we want to go to. We can uh, choose whatever we want here. Oh, go with it. Yeah, we can go to. Oh, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Next, okay. Choose next. Now here's where we choose what we're going to do in terms of the file system. Now, if you want to, I don't know whether this will even give us the opportunity of doing it in FAT32, but NTFS is good if you're using a Windows XP system. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the, uh, the file system on the drive. So mm -hmm. Windows XP, Windows 2000 uses NTFS. Mm -hmm. Previous generations of Windows would use uh, FAT32, correct? Right, and in this case, you just want to leave it the way it is and then hit finish. Okay. So now when you click that, it will actually show the disk as unformatted. Give it a few seconds to, for that to kick in. Right. So but you'll have 189.92 gigabytes. Instead of unallocated, it'll be unformatted. Now the one thing that's worth noting here is this is a 200 gigabyte disk, but it's saying 189.92. And, uh, Why is that? That's the difference between binary and decimal. So hard drive manufacturers measure their drive sizes in decimal. So if it says 200 gigabytes, they're talking 2000000000 and on and on. Whereas the way that Windows measures it is in binary. So they're talking 1024. So instead of an even number like that, you'll get 10048 something. I don't remember all the digits so there. Smart. So that'll give you this difference between what you expect and what you're actually going to see in Windows. Okay, cool. So it's formatting now. It's showing 7%, mm -hmm. 8%. It's yeah. going to take a while now. This no? is going to go on for a while. Okay, wow, so I love traveling in time. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so you know what? Um, so now we're at 100%. We're at 100%. It yeah. says healthy. It says 189.92. Ah, interesting. Okay. All right, so, so what's left to do now? I guess now this can be used as a data drive, correct? Right. Now, actually, if you go over to your, my computer now, it should appear there as E. Uh, click on my computer, and yeah. there it is. There is a new volume. It's called new volume E colon. Right. So there's a way to do this uh, with um, the Macintosh as well. If you could actually, before you unplug this, mm -hmm. go back to the disk management, just okay. to show this right from the start, and uh, actually just delete partition there. Okay, so I'm going to right click on it and say... Right. Just delete partition and uh, just follow that. Partition. So all, all data will be lost. If you want to start a, a drive from scratch, this is how you do it. You delete the partition and then reformat it. Okay, okay so now you see it's unallocated. Right. So we're going to yank this. And we're going to start it over here. What you want to do is you want to go over to uh, your Applications folder. You want to go to the Utilities folder. Right. And then you want to use the Disk Utility. Oh, that's nice. There's not so many click pieces. Of, you know, that's one of the superiorities of Mac, of course, is that mm. you don't have to click so much. So it's basically... Uh, you do have to click through a few times as, as well on that. So, you know... It's, it's, strokes it's, for different folks. Right. So now what you see on the left-hand side here yeah. is as we plug that in, it appears on that side. Now we've got the Macintosh HD, which is my main hard drive, and we've got this other one, which is the Mac store. Now you see there's nothing set up there right now. It's just a regular drive, and it's not appearing on my desktop. Okay. Uh, what you need to do is you actually need to go to Erase. Okay, so we have an unallocated drive plugging into the Mac, just like on Windows, doesn't know yeah, what, you won't, what to do with it, right? You won't see it until you uh, actually initialize it this so way. You're gonna, so, so you're going to use the Erase command, mm -hmm. and this is going to kind of just wipe the, make it clean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so you choose your volume format, in this case Mac OS uh, Extended Journal. Now that will work with all Macintoshes. It won't work with Windows. This is a file system, is it? This is Just the like file NTFS system. NTFS and Windows, Win 30, uh, FAT32 is on the Windows side. This is Mac OS Extended is a mm -hmm. file partitioning system? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're going to be installing this hard drive as an internal inside a Macintosh tower, you'd want to use that. Okay. If you're going to use it as an external, Especially if you're going to uh, use it with a Windows machine too, you'll want to think about that. I mean, that. if you're going to share one of these drives between a Mac and a, right. a PC? So if you need a sneaker net and take it from one machine to the yeah. other, then you'll want to reformat it in a different format that's 
um, viewable like that. And it's not NTFS. It's not, okay. No, you want to use actually, in this case, Mac, or not Mac OS, MS DOS. And that's essentially putting into <coughs> FAT32 FAT32, mode. right. So and that was the, uh, <coughs> the file system that was used by uh, Windows ME 98. Right. Um, and 95, no? Yes. There you go, okay. I think that used FAT. I think you used some FAT32, yeah. So um, you don't want to use NTFS on this. You might be tempted to do that, but NTFS will give you one really weird little catch here. Mm -hmm. As if you plug it into this Windows machine, it'll read and write just fine. You right. plug it into the Macintosh machine, yeah. it'll read it fine, yeah. but you can't write to oh, it. Oh, it's okay. So you can't dump your files from here onto an NTFS drive. Correct. It just doesn't know how to deal with that, I guess. Right, it'll right? give you an error. So you want to set it up. Yeah. More or less. <laughs> so we'll hit MS DOS file system here and just choose a race. And the same same general format. It'll uh, format it in a, you know, I think that it, actually with Macintosh it does it pretty quickly. Ding, 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 ding. And it says it's partitioning now. How long does it take? Um, generally it's pretty quick when you do Macintosh. When you do MS DOS it's a little bit longer. Right. So that's that's basically it. Same same general deal. Right. Very good. Okay. Well, thank you, Sean, for take walking us through this uh, fun and exciting things. You know, make sure you get your mom to watch this because she's going to want to know. Pot roast, reformatting, and adding second hard drives. This cat's like must be spring or something. Yeah, give me this. There you go. That's it for us. I'm Andy Walker, and that's this is uh, my cohort. He knows his name. Sean Carruthers. Sean Carruthers. Uh, we love it when we get email from you guys. We got an email from a guy called Andy Walker in Ireland the other day. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so feedback at labrest.tv. Um, what else can we say? Oh, yeah, my book. We talked about my book earlier. Absolute Beginner's Guide to Security, Spam, Spyware, and Viruses. And we learn more about that at labrest.tv. There's a link there. Click it. We even talked about your next book. And I have, actually, I'm going to announce it next week or the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be announcing a third book. And it involves space cars and stuff like that. I'll have more for you uh, probably in two episodes time, so I'll let you know what that's, because I haven't signed on the bottom, dotted line yet. Okay, that's it for the ads from Andy Walker. Do you have any ads from Sean Carruthers? Check out his Flickr account. He's got a yeah. great Flickr account with tons of pictures from uh, uh, call, uh, call for Help and mm -hmm. from the old days when I was on Call for Help. And uh, what else? You take pictures Some of flowers and rats and birds. Crumbs and sandwiches you ate at lunch. And uh, keyboards that I blow up. There you go, globalhermit.com, you can find a link there, or flickr.com slash photos slash globalhermit. There you go, it's right here, or here, I don't know where it is, but anyway, it'll be there. Uh, that's it from us. Thank you for downloading, as always. I am Andy Walker, as I said before. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Are you ready?